Hey guys, Jeff here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I restored and painted all of my kitchen cabinets. This is a great project for anybody who's got old, tired stick frame cabinets like I do. I'm going to show you how to make them look brand new. Cheers. I am using a 220 grit, 5 inch random orbital. has holes in it because you can sand and it sucks like a vacuum filters out. Keeps the air somewhat clean. Nice, 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 nice. Now, we have two issues here. One, this is the second paint job this cabinet's had. There's an original paint, they can scratch it off. Okay, see that? I don't know what they painted it with, but it sure as heck wasn't something that they sanded first and then put an enamel paint on. This is some other kind of like homeowner, maybe something that from Bear that they got at the Home Depot close by. It's not a kitchen cabinet paint, obviously, and they never prepped the surface right. So I've actually got to take the surface off before I can prep my kitchen. What a pain in the butt ski. <laughs> And then I just realized, wow, it would have been really nice if I wasn't using 220 grit. <laughs> this would be a perfect time for a 50, 50 grit sandpaper. I'm going to be all day pulling that off. My goodness. All right. Well, listen, uh, let's move on to phase two, which is the actual surface of these counters. Um, this is a particle board shelf, and it's been used and abused over the years. Whenever you have particle board, you've got to maintain your paint because if you start to see that brown showing through, like right here, and every time you put a wet glass from the dishwasher in your counter, you're in trouble. There we go. <laughs> point is this, you want to make sure all your surfaces are sanded smooth and then clean because you can't paint dust. <laughs> it doesn't bond, right? So you got a couple of options when it comes to cleaning this up. Um, the best one is obviously a, uh, a damp rag, okay? But you can also get rid of most of your dust if you have a compressor and an air tool. And I'm going to just uh, sand for about the next two hours and then I'll show you that. That's not that bad. <coughs> not bad. All right. All right. Okay. I'm just going to take a damp rag here. The difference between wet and damp <laughs> is exactly that. A wet rag hasn't been wrung out. And a damp rag has been wrung out. Now, let's just do a clean hand and we'll check to see if there's any, any surface dust. Yeah, you can see it all. So vacuuming is kind of like not bad but it's not a solution. So make sure that you take the time to wash everything here with a damp rag, get the dust out. And then we're gonna spray the primer for the wood because we've got a fair amount of exposed surface up here. All right, brilliant. Now that is the next step. Now we get our paint sprayer over here and we're gonna pull out the wood primer and give that a good spray. At the same time, I'm going to shoot my ceilings <laughs> because it's the same paint. Yep, I love it. When you're in a situation like this, um, making things easy and efficient is really the key. So I don't need a mask. I don't need to do anything crazy, right? If I'm using the same primer on my cabinets as I'm finishing paint for the ceiling. Because it's wood primer, it's a flat white. That's all I'm looking for. A nice fresh coat of flat white so that I have some uniformity because there's been a few stains and a few touch-ups on the ceiling done in prior times. We want to be able to cover all that up and have a nice, flat, boring, simple ceiling. 
we're using a Preparate Pro, Pro Block. This is a wood primer. It has a lot of applications, but it can go straight on wood paneling. So if you have a house built in wood paneling era, this is the solution to your problem. That's what I was using over here. Unfortunately, that can fell over, so it's gonna be messy. Mm. There we are. Bloop. This can go in the bin. Oh, by the way, when you're dealing with wet paint, before you throw it in the garbage, leave it open, let it dry out. That's it, just let the paint dry. Once it's dry, it's just dried paint. As long as you're putting it wet into the, gar into the garbage, you're letting the risk of all of that contaminants and stuff in the soil. Okay, we're gonna clean off our spray nozzle here. I wanna change the wand to just the nozzle. And hopefully, it's not under so much pressure. I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, baby. I think it's time to give that one a good clean anyway. Okay, we gotta loose this up, because this gets loose and then this slides out. Okay, great opportunity to check it for gunk. There we go, that's the spray. Let's get that in there. And then we can tighten this up. The tip can only be replaced when this is loose. It tightens up here and here at the same time. All right, it's good to know. There we go, that's facing forward. We'll get this out of here, this out of here, and this out of here. My pump is on, let's turn the machine on. There we go. Now we're fully loaded. It's the same paint that was in there before, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, now. Okay. The key here, of course, is to keep this kind of like 90 degrees. Okay. Yeah, you're supposed to be working. <laughs> All right. So like I said, I want to spray my, the edge of my ceilings first just because uh, it needs to be done. Okay, and that's it. Boom. All right. That ain't normal. Stop acting up. Oh, you make me very frustrated. Okay, so I don't spray my camera guy. I think the lens is still good. Uh, we're just going to prime the inside of this cabinet, wherever we see the wood, okay? We don't have to do the whole cabinet. We just want to hit all that exposed wood, give it something to soak up, so that we can get another finish on there. That's good. I don't have to prime the paint or the rest of the wood. It's already got a paint coat on there. So we're going to consider that primed already. Okay. If the sanding disc isn't taking it off, then it's perfectly good to paint on. So this surface is already ready to go. All right. All I got to do is switch over to the 220 and do a little, little finer sand here to make the transition from one paint to the next a little smoother. Get rid of the 60. Throw on the 220. Okay. And now we'll just give it another quick scuff because when you run your hand over it, you can feel the texture. And you don't want to have texture when you're painting. There we go. You'd be amazed the difference going from a 60 to a 220 makes when you're touching it. That's awesome. So now those surfaces are prepped and ready to paint. Primer takes about 20 minutes to set up, so we're gonna just, uh, yeah.
Now it's time to switch paints. Not just the, the texture, but the color, all of it. This is going to be awesome. Um, in order to do this, we have to leave the outfeed here, okay? Because we're going to prime the pump and then run through. I want to take my damp rag. I want to clean my intake, right? And this is a throwaway scenario. <laughs> Let's wipe as much of that off of there as we can, and bye bye. Whoop! Didn't work out so well. And then we pump it into here. Okay? I know, crazy. Okay, so what we're looking at, this is the discharge. And I'm filling this green paint and trying to replace it. Can't do it without getting all this out of the line. Now let me just get that primer dried out of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my primer on this back wall where I have all my, my lovely printed drywall. And I'm gonna spray until I see the green start coming through, okay? Mm-hmm, behave. So ultimately this vinyl, I could have primer and then cabinet color or just the cabinet color on there. So it doesn't matter to me when that transition happens. But I definitely don't want to see that wall pink hurt. It's a finished product, right? <laughs> go we got cabinet color ah very nice now I'm gonna get another rag now now that my paints coming through I'm gonna just clean this up as much as I can as well I don't mind getting a little bit of contamination in a paint line here guys okay done all right the point of this There we go, was to get to this point where we can see our new paint color, right? And there it is. I think it's called evergreen fog or mist or something. I don't know. My wife picked it out. Oh, there's the label. Evergreen fog. Not sure what an evergreen fog is. Ha, <laughs> But there are thousands and thousands of paint colors in the big book. And so, sooner or later, yeah, that primer's still not dry on there. Okay, we're gonna have to wait a few minutes. Yeah, all right, so I just washed my hands, like the primer. The stuff we're using, it's got a built-in sticky component to it, so it bonds to surfaces. It doesn't wash off that well. You might wanna consider wearing gloves. Um, so, this paint job, instead of masking off all the doors, okay, because the other backside is kind of ugly, I'm going to paint the entire thing. This uh, can get a little messy. So the secret is to hit this top, and then the sides, and then the back. And then um, when I'm done, all of the back walls and the, and, the, and the ceilings of the shelves, we'll come back, we'll do the bottom, and then the face. Because we want to give this primer a chance to dry. All right, there we go. Now, this is probably gonna take two coats to do this well, but. The secret, of course, is have it on the lowest pressure possible, so it's not blowing back in your face the whole time. All right. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty 
sexy. I do say so myself. All right. Whew. Now the secret here is this trim. We're gonna paint that with a brush later, okay? So, we'll see if we can paint this without a cut surface. Not bad. <laughs> All right. You don't want to resist the temptation to do too many touch-ups in the same area at the same time. Uh, always better to come back and spray 20 minutes, half an hour later, let everything dry first. Otherwise, you're going to get all these drips, big thick blobs and gobs. It's going to look like heck. All right. Here we go, underneath. Okay. All right. Whew. There we go. Well, that's not so bad, eh? All righty. Now we'll hit inside these cabinets while we're at it. Okay. Now we have to just say, okay, I gotta let this dry. So the reason I stopped what I was doing and did this area is because I have to paint all of my kitchen cabinet doors. So the doors are in. There we are. Wow, that's uh, that took a took up effort, didn't it? What I want to do is I gotta set up my spray station right there okay uh, because uh, perfect we're going to be um, demonstrating today how to paint your cabinet doors um, this is just a quick little system you come over here, this is a, uh, a slotted L-shaped piece of metal bracket. It's heavy gauge. It'll carry a lot of weight without bending under pressure, right? So, bear with me and I'll show you the system. We just simply get on the ladder, throw a couple of screws into these holes, okay? And we don't even want them drilled all the way down. Just, just like that, so the rod can't slide off, all right? <laughs> I know, it's that simple. And then I'll throw one over here too for the same thing in case there's an accident. All right, there we go. There. Now that rail's not going anywhere. Now, let me just show you. These are panels that I have to uh, paint to do the end capping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cap it like an Ikea system. We're gonna measure, cut, and then install that. But we're gonna get it painted first. All right, and here we go. I'm gonna use cup hooks right here, all right? Screw them into the bottom side of the doors that are on the bottom and the top of the doors that are going up top in the kitchen and we'll paint them and then hang them here to dry. Boom, that's the entire system. Uh -huh. All right, that's it. That's not that complicated. So. These are the doors. Um, we ordered these online from the cabinet door store. Right, fantastic. Uh, I have to make a second order because somehow I confused three of the door sizes. It's gonna, I'm gonna take the blame for that one. Um, these things happen. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, we're gonna get as many of these done as we can, get them off the floor. And we're gonna use this corner like a spray booth, right? I already have my window protected. I don't care how much primer blows around. I don't care how much cabinet paint blows around. Ultimately, we're gonna finish that in the cabinet paint anyway. So, we just gotta think the end from the beginning on a project. Make sure that uh, 
it's a lot easier to prime something in an area where there's primer flowing around, right? That just makes sense. So I uh, gotta get a drill. I gotta pre-drill the holes so I can put those cup hooks in nice and simple. And then we're gonna get spraying again. All right, here's the system, guys. Hook and go. <laughs> it's, it's really that simple, right? Um, this is a wood primer and the machine's off. <laughs> oh, shit. That also means I'm gonna be. Let's see how much paint we got in here. Yeah, it was just about to die. Really, only a couple of rules here. Um, rule number one less is more. So you're gonna get a lot of overspray because you don't wanna be too close, right? This is a uh, shaker door, so it's got a lot of detail. So you wanna kind of spray um, straight on, but a little bit down, and then a little bit up. So shoot from above and then from beneath, and you should get all of those grooves at the same time. And here we go. <laughs> now that it's on, it'll probably be easier to paint. There we are. And the other end. And from on top. Remember, it's six sides. So make sure you get a little paint everywhere. And all you do is just grab your little hook and set it over here to dry. All right, grab another one. And do this 28 times. <laughs> oh yeah, did I mention? Uh, it's three coats of paint, one primer, two finish coats. So this takes time, which is why having the drying rack is real beneficial. And because you're spraying, the drying time is 20 to 30 minutes because wood absorbs the moisture, okay? Here we go. Let's get that going the right direction here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these doors you know, in the small batches so that they're not drying stuck together. All right? And I'll just kind of come out and do a little bit. I'm gonna be working in another part of the house and all day long I'll just keep coming out and cycling through my program. And there we go. And you're gonna get some paint on your fingers. Be prepared for that. You know, let's put on a big door and have some more fun. There we are. Okay. Here we go. And we'll catch you over here. All righty. I think I got gotcha. you. Underneath. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it is kind of fun. The secret here is uh, having strong enough fingers to lift that up and move it. Uh, if you don't have strong fingers, get yourself a big drill bit. And you can just kind of. There we are. Woohoo! All right. That's just rocking around a little too much for me. <laughs> but it'll work. Okay. Now, all right guys, so we just have a basic shaker door here. So there is no up or down, right? I went by and take a look at all these earlier and uh, I have them standing up the way I want them. But that's only because a couple of the corners had a little bit of a rounding on it. We're gonna pre-drill. And then take a cup hook and just get that sucker in there with three or four threads. Once it gets started, the threads really just start pulling it through. There we go. And just finish in line with the, with the door. There we go. And, and then we paint. All right, 
And then across the top, underneath. Shoot underneath real quick. There we go. Done and done. Okay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get all these doors done. And then uh, once they're all painted, we'll jump back in the kitchen and we'll install all the brand new hardware and hang the doors.